The Yankees made a massive addition this winter when they brought in superstar Juan Soto, adding Alex Verdugo and Trent Grisham to the mix to supercharge your outfield with depth and talent. Pitching has now become the focus for the Yankees, who will look to bolster their pitching depth and make a serious push for the World Series, but without Yoshinobu Yamamoto on the market, they'll have to pivot to Jordan Montgomery, who just won the 2023 World Series with the Texas Rangers, and could reunite with the Yankees in the Bronx this upcoming offseason. Hello everybody, I'm Ryan from Fireside Yankees, and before we get into today's video, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know of our next upload. We're uploading podcasts daily, and we have content that you guys do not want to miss out on, so make sure you join the Fireside family today and get caught up on all things Yankees related. And with that out of the way, let's get into today's video. For those living under a rock, Jordan Montgomery was drafted by the Yankees back in 2014 out of the University of South Carolina, and he would come up through the system with the team. He'd make his debut in 2017, and he was one of the better pitchers in the American League that season, going 9-7 with a 3.88 ERA across 29 starts for the Yankees, resulting in a 2.6 F4 on the season and a 6th place finish in the Rookie of the Year vote. While Tommy John surgery limited him to just 31 in the third innings pitch over the next two seasons, we'd see Montgomery back in a full-time role in 2020. 2020 would be a weird year for Montgomery, not just because of the COVID-19 season, but also because he put up a 5.11 ERA across 10 starts, which would indicate that this year was a disappointment, but there was still a lot to like from his COVID-shortened year. While Montgomery gave up a lot of home runs, allowing 7 in just 44 innings pitched, his strikeout rate was at 24.4% and his walk rate sat at just 4.7%. He held a 3.87 FIP, which indicated that he'd be due for positive regression for the following season. Montgomery also saw his velocity go up a bit on his fastballs, indicating that his stuff had improved following his Tommy John surgery. Entering 2021, Montgomery would be the team's fourth starter, as the team slid both Corey Kluber and Domingo Herman ahead of him in the rotation, but by season's end, he was their second best starter. This is a big year for Gumby, logging a career high 157 and a third innings across 30 starts and pitching to a 3.83 ERA and 3.69 FIP. He put up 3.2 F4, the most for any season of his career at that point, and he looked like the pitcher the Yankees hoped he would become. 2022 would be a year that would see a couple of notable aggressions that would lead to the Yankees eventually trading him at the deadline. Entering the All-Star break, Montgomery's fit from 2021 to 2022 climbed from 3.61 to 3.91, and his ERA climbed from 3.48 to 3.69, with his strikeout rate dropping nearly 4%, and his home run rate increased as well through the first half of the season with the Yankees. Following their acquisition of Frankie Montas, the team would look to flip a starting pitcher for a position player, but which arm made sense to trade? Luis Severino was on the IL with an oblique strain, and with him coming back from Tommy John surgery that knocked him out for nearly two years, his value on the market was understandably diminished. Nesta Cortez was in the midst of an all-star caliber season, and Garrett Cole was never going to be traded, leaving Frankie Montas and Jordan Montgomery as their trade chips, and as much as fans don't want to hear this, and I don't like saying this, if you thought the Yankees were going to trade Frankie Montas a couple of days after they just traded for him, you're being completely unreasonable. Should the Yankees have gotten a better return for Montgomery? Absolutely. I can't disagree with that, but this trade has to do more with what the Yankees could move and what they needed, which was a center fielder, and less about the idea that Brian Cashman thought that Jordan Montgomery couldn't pitch in the playoffs. Also, for those wondering if Jordan Montgomery feels slighted by the deal, we won't truly ever know how he felt about the trade, but if you think he's turning down money from the Yankees because they traded him, then you don't know who Scott Boris is. And also, Brian Cashman never told the media that he thought Jordan Montgomery wasn't good enough. That's all fabrication. But back to the baseball aspect of it here, the real problem with this deal was how Montgomery pitched following the trade, as he was one of the best pitchers in baseball following this deal with the Cardinals. He would pitch to the tune of a 3.17 ERA across 43 starts, with a dominant postseason run with the Texas Rangers at the end of 2023, where he had a 2.90 ERA across 31 innings pitched, making 5 starts and coming out of the bullpen, making a huge relief outing, and helping the eventual World Series champions etch their name in history. He had the second most innings pitched in baseball this past season when you account for that postseason run, and his breakout season this past year was a result of some changes he made to better blend his secondaries with his sinker and become significantly more effective. When he went to the Rangers, he began throwing fewer sinkers, a tweak that he actually made with the Yankees in 2021 and 2022, and it was especially against right-handed batters, as blending in more curveballs and change-ups alongside some four-seam fastballs upstairs for whiffs and chases out of the strike zone. As a result, he pitched to the tune of a 2.79 ERA across 11 starts, 
averaging six innings a start and showing off an ability to pitch deep into games while also limiting walks and damage contact. He walked just 4.9% of batters faced while allowing just a 5.6% barrel rate, and the ability to limit damage contact and throw strikes should entice the Yankees plenty. 2023 was the best season of Jordan Montgomery's career, putting up a 3.20 ERA across 118 and two-third innings pitched, and he was able to show off the ability to pitch deep into games and prevent runs at a great clip. His 4.3 F4 made him the 13th most valuable pitcher in baseball this past season, and the Yankees could use an arm like this in the rotation. One apparent thing is the fact that they need reliable innings. Montgomery may not be a superstar, but he's certainly a reliable starter. He's consistently a 3-4 war pitcher, who this past season showed the ability to be a lot more down the stretch. Carlos Rodon could be one of the best pitchers in baseball again like he was in 2022, when he finished near the top of the league in ERA, war, strikeouts, and various other metrics, but he saw the ugly side of his outcomes as well. Injuries can screw up a season, and that's exactly what happened with Rodon, who was one of the worst pitchers in baseball this past year as a result. Sure, Nestor Cortez is in a similar boat, but we know the talent is there too. He had a 3.66 expected ERA in 2023, and if he pitches closer to his talent level, he could be a good starter as well in this league. We know that the talent is there for both of these arms, but we don't know is how healthy they'll be and whether you can get through the entire season with both of them healthy and available every fifth day. That certainty does exist for Montgomery, however, who is one of just 10 starters to make at least 94 starts over the past three seasons, and he could give the Yankees the stability they need in the middle of the rotation, but what price would be appropriate for him? Reports have come out about the asking price being around $160 million, and the Yankees are almost certainly not shelling out that price tag for Jordan Montgomery. The New York Mets had interest, but no longer seemed to be interested in shopping at the top of the market for starters after missing on Yoshinobu Yamamoto, so you can count them out of the Jordan Montgomery sweepstakes. Next, there's the Boston Red Sox, and while the fit is obvious, as his wife is actually staying at Boston College to do some research for her professional work, the Red Sox might not have the budget to go out and get a guy like Jordan Montgomery, and that at least takes a suitor away that's going to drive up the price, not necessarily meaning that the Red Sox are completely out of it, just that they probably won't go to $160 million. His incumbent team, the Texas Rangers, also lost a chunk of revenue, and that's because of a result of their TV deal being in flux, as they relied on Bally Sports, and Bally had a lot of financial issues this past year. I expect there to be interest from the Rangers as well, but it's again unclear how much they're willing to offer, and it doesn't look like they're going to be a team that's going to drive with the bidding as well. A more reasonable deal for the Yankees and Jordan Montgomery could be a six-year, $135 million contract, one that would cost the Yankees roughly $22 million a year, a much more palatable number. At that price point, the Yankees are getting one of the healthiest and most reliable starters in the sport, and Montgomery ends up making serious money on the market as a result. With Cole, Rodon, Montgomery, Cortez, and Schmidt, they have a rotation that consists of three arms who made 30 starts this past season, and two arms in Rodon and Cortez, who both possess extremely high ceilings and could take this rotation to the next level. They push into the top 10 in rotation war projections, but there is still some volatility given Rodon and Cortez, however that plays in both senses. Sure, there's the outcome where they just repeat their 2023 seasons and are completely ineffective, if not just net negatives for the New York Yankees, but there are also the outcomes where Carlos Rodon and Esto Cortez pitch to their talent level and the Yankees have four stars in the rotation who have ace upside. With that being said though, who knows what Jordan Montgomery's going to get out of this market, but if the Yankees can secure him at around that $135 to $140 million price range, that's a great pitcher on a pretty solid deal, and it's a pitcher who's familiar with New York and can pitch in big games. Do you want to know how to smooth over a trade? It's by bringing that pitcher back and then going out and winning a World Series with him in your rotation so that there's no more questions about the front office and no more questions about ownership's commitment to win baseball games. This team needs to go all in. They made that decision when they traded for Juan Soto, and now is an opportunity to go out and secure the middle of your rotation, not just for 2024, but for the foreseeable future. Thank you guys for sticking through for the entire video. We greatly appreciate your guys' support. And if you enjoyed today's video and want more content like this, we have all of this on our Fireside Yankee socials. We have a Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, this YouTube page. We're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers on the YouTube page. We're trying to hit 20,000 on the TikTok. We've already surpassed 20,000 on Twitter, but, you know, we want to get to 30K at some point. So, hey, if you guys can help us out on those fronts, that would be great. Links are all in the description. And of course, you guys can check out Empire Sports Media for written content on all of your favorite New York sports teams. Thank you once again for sticking by. I'm Ryan from Fireside Yankees, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.